it is a rock and rogue like deck builder. In it, you're basically building a band of knights and samurais to take on demons. Uh, whenever you do a run, you choose the musicians that are going to be on your band. Yeah. And each one of them has their own sets of cards and abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. So when you choose that band at the beginning, that's really going to change kind of the, the makeup of your deck and your experience on that run. When we launch, there's going to be eight musicians to start, but we will be adding additional ones post release uh, for free. So that's kind of high level it's the game. So um, each musician basically has their own like pre deck or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So each musician has uh, two starting cards initially. You can unlock the third one through challenges. But then they also have a set of cards that as you play and defeat enemies, you'll be able to choose to add those cards of theirs to your deck. So they are all very specialized. So it's not like, oh, just changing your drummer. They're slightly different. They are like completely different play styles, new mechanics and all that. So it really changes. So you're with a team rather than just going like one-on-one -on -one, like yes. with other people. Exactly. So a big inspiration for it is kind of like mixing Slay the Spire, Darkest Dungeon, and Monster Train. So obviously you have the deck building and branching paths like Slay the Spire. But then you have a party-based system like Darkest Dungeon. And then sort of the mixing of uh, different classes like Monster Train. So normally this is where you would choose your band, but just for this we have these four ones unlocked for you. So um, this one, uh, this is... Um, so that's the drummer. drummer. Drummers are more of a tank character. Your bassist is more of an AOE damage. Guitarist is uh, single damage. And then your support character is the vocalist. Oh, that's cool because usually like I would think, I would like think of like the basis as like the support character. Yeah, I know of, like, a lot of people, singer, yeah. a lot of people think of even like the drummer as like, you know, keeping the Yeah, and, yeah. But yeah, but even uh, with these characters having more defined roles, you can really shape them however you want in that we've designed each musician to have basically like three archetypes. Yeah. So if you want to build a really offensive team, you can build them that way. If you want to build a more defensive team, you can build them that way. So here's your map. I'll help you through here so that you know what's going on and what card does what. So I just pick any one of these. Yeah, they're all they're all just initial battles to start. Okay, so uh, also with each character, they have a starting ability. If you want me, we, we can put it here, then I'll give you more of you. Perfect, perfect, there you go. So, this guy, or the purple guy's ability, the bassist, he has every time you do, somebody's corroded with this corrosion thing, he's gonna do extra damage. So let's play that on one of these two demons. And now let's use his dice roll ability which has one damage three times, but if we hit that guy with the three, it's going to do big. So there, we got a lot out of it. So um, on the left, that's how many? Yeah, that's your energy, and then you can see how much energy each card costs as well. So you can do anything in any order. Obviously, the colors correspond to the characters you can see yeah. in their health bar. So I would also assume, like, if... They were to get knocked out. I wouldn't need the cards, to yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if uh, one of the characters dies, they're dead for the rest of the run, but there are ways to revive them. And uh, their cards are now removed from the, you know, the pile, if you will. Now, some people have chosen to, you know, maybe lean into that in a strategic way in that let's kill off two of these yes. characters. So they can get, like, the cards that they need. Exactly, yeah. and you can really start doing some powerful combos. So what I'd say is power charges increase uh, damage. So let's give that to the purple guy because he has a multi-attack, so it's going to do the most with him. So now we're three times three. I think we're going to be able to kill at least one of these guys. There we go. And we have two. Uh, we're not able to quite finish them off, but doing that, you'll at least heal your singer if you use the aerial, or already arterial bite. <laughs> I like that, like, because, like, you mentioned Slay the Spire, so, like, I played that, like, a little bit before, so I like how the graphics for this game is, like, grainy, more or less, like, it kind of um, almost resembles Borderlands in a sense, but 
I like the graphic um, aesthetic of this game. What that does is it increases the damage received per hit. So let's put that on whoever has the most health. That'd be a good person to use that on. Oh, they're all the same. Yeah. So for the next four, well, I guess the next four turns, they take increased damage. Yeah. So so what happens with any charge is it ticks down one thing per turn. So this turn they're going to take four extra damage. Then next time three. So if we can get that damage in now, it's definitely quicker. There you go. And you broke his armor, and when you break armor, they become stunned, so they're not going to be able to have their uh, ability base. Okay. How do you tell when... Oh, okay, you see the seven. Okay, I was yep. going to say, how do you tell if they got the armor? But... And you also have armor. Uh, some characters start with a base amount of armor. Yeah. And uh, armor always regenerates between battles, whereas health does not. So, be good for this one. I would say let's let's yeah. augment red, yeah, and then because he has two attacks, so that's where we can get the most out of this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, well. uh, what's the difference between rage? Oh, never mind, it says right here. So, like, what are rage charges? I can, I can explain that right here. <laughs> They're interviewing over there. Sure. So, uh, so the way this guy works is he's a guitarist and he's an angry bartender. When he gets hit, yeah. he gets angry. He builds up rage, okay. and so each of those rage is going to boost that. So, okay. so basically, hold on to this until like he gets hit. Basically, yeah. I mean, you can use it this turn because what happens is it gets just it's all going to get discarded whether you use it or not. But you'll be able to draw. Yeah. So, so he still does five damage regardless. Yep. Okay. Yep. And that's because it's, it's usually three, but you have uh, a boosted thing there. Oh, okay. You know it's a four-person team, so for this... So what does this icon mean? Like, he's so, got a buff? So what he's in right now is a stance. So if you press up on the uh, analog stick... Uh, oh, I got yeah. So you can just shuffle over there and go to... You see that little icon? So you're looking at that one. Bring it over here to a stance. Uh, and go down. Uh, press down on the stick? Yep. There. Oh. So hovering there. Oh, okay. So every time he takes armor damage, he's going to get power, which makes him stronger. So he's in that stance until you do health damage to him. So it's one of those things where we're going to have to hit him to get that armor off. But every time we do, he's going to get stronger. So we almost want to break his armor in like one turn if we can. Because he's going to have the strongest effect. Uh, also, how do you tell which player go, which um, person goes next? Like, I'm guessing the four is like. Yeah. So, so the way it works is, if you look here, you can see what the enemy intent is. So this guy, what he's doing, and when it's smiley faces, they're doing a status effect. In this yeah. case, he's gonna be doing. He's gonna enter the same stance as this guy. Yeah. So that's what he's doing. But this guy, he's going to be attacking the red character or third character for two damage twice. So he's okay. dragging him. And what we do is we end up just summing what the total damage is. So you don't have to add up each thing. It's just like, okay, he's taking 10 so damage. Like, yeah. So like it's not like turn order, basically. No. But it's more like you see yeah, so, is doing it next, basically. Yeah, and the way that the damage proceeds is it goes left to right. So it's going to go this character, this character, this character, this character. Okay. So there's no like no like speed stat or whatever? Like nope. Care? Okay. Nope, nope. And so you go in any order, and then they're going to go left to right. So we'll see, he'll go into a stance. And it's also the positioning. And he did three, three, there we go. And look at this guy, he's getting real angry now. So the rage, um, let me actually read. The rage, the rage builds up. So like he can just, 
So the only way to spend it is by saying, oh, it does like rage damage or whatever. Yeah, it just exactly. Keeps it keeps building until you have a card that uses rage damage and then it wipes it out entirely, basically. There are cards where you can convert rage damage into power, damage, which doesn't consume. What I would say is let's corrode this guy with seven. Because that does armor damage. He has a lot of armor right now. Yeah. And let's, so corrosion just targets armor. Yeah, it just targets armor. But it also increases his damage. So if we get some lucky rolls here, we could do 12 if it all went on to him, right? So, so like, any one of these will do, basically, I think. Yeah. Because he has, like, low... So yeah. it's going to hit the armor first, and it's going to go down. It's going to break him. Yeah, exactly. So... One, it's going to stun him, but also he's out of his stance now. Okay. And if we do the roll, dice roll, we might be lucky enough to break that other this guy's, guy's stance. This guy's your basis. We'll make it so that every point that oh, that quite oh well. have, an enemy has, acts as a bonus game. Uh, almost. So, like, if you put this on either of So, like, the Berserk stance that, well, him, whatever, the stances that he's in, if yeah. I'm able to, like, break that armor, then all of the buffs that they get, um, basically... Get broken in essence, or? so so he just he just broke it or he just uh, what happens once they're out of it, right? The um, the power charges will stay, but they tick down each each time. So we can get rid of them. Like, look, what I would do is let's just kill this guy. Let's give power charges to the yeah, and then let's just wipe that guy off the face. Oh, don't gotta worry about his stance or power charge. Yeah, I guess. And then that'll do three damage, so we're almost there. There's a lot, like, in depth. Like, it's not just simply, like, building a deck around, like, a synergy or whatever, because you have to also now be mindful of what the opponent is doing as well. Yeah, for sure. Like, a, a, big, a big thing of it is, you know, all these combos that you can get off between your characters. And using one guy's stuff to build this other guy. Got that out of the way there. So there's also no such thing as like a level system. Like say if I favor like the blue guy over the red. No, he's whatever. not gonna get stronger okay. over time or anything like that. Alright. There is oh destroy all very yeah. so even the basics can be a very So this would be good it, so what it would do is it's gonna do for each barrier charge that you destroy, that's how much damage. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Because the zero threw me off. I'm yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but you can also always don't like either of these. We can just take money and go spend at the shop later on as well. If you're doing that, yeah. If you're basically like this guy's gonna be your main DPS. So how long? Oh. Yeah. So yeah, I was, I was gonna say. I was gonna say you won't play the full deck. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can go home and play on Steam. But what I usually say is like. Let's let's check out some of these. Yeah, I was gonna these like, and that's because I know like if I'm guessing right, the treasure chest is basically gonna be like a um, little room with the chest itself, or enemies guarding the chest, something like that. Yeah, basically those treasure chests. That's where you can get a, a additional gear, which will augment what they do. Basically, we have that because some of them will be like, uh, like we have cards called stances, and so there's a lot of synergies, right? So it'll be like, uh, oh, nice, so got rid of his stuff already. Okay, so here you go. Your first little story. Oh, oh my god, I forgot I had charges like, oops. Basically, you have some options here. Now, we'll see this last one is free, though. That's because you chose to take Proxy um, Cleaver and not. So remember, this guy has instability, so it's going to do extra damage, too, right? So, there, so it went to 8, and then we could kill him with this one if we want. I would figure he would hit the hardest because he has the most health, yeah, so I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. He's, a, he's a bit of a tank, for sure. Yeah. And what he ends up doing a lot of the time is he can guard other uh, allies, so if he builds up a bunch of armor, now you got to break through him if you yeah. want to take somebody down. You can do that. It's kind of funny because like uh, anyone who is like clearly plays Switch a lot 
they just keep having to go to menus because they go to hit the menu and it's like, no. And then if they come back over, yeah. <laughs> and um, also, again, like I'm, because I'm not really paying attention, no, no, no. but like, no. after every, I guess, battle or whatever, yep. the health recovers at the end of each go, or they keep the same no. health as you enter? You health, you health always keeps battle to battle, so if this guy leaves with 22, oh, that's okay. what he'll leave with, but armor always regenerates. Okay. Uh, there are places in the uh, progression, though, that you can heal at. Yeah, so there are little rest stops. And then basically, like, that one, or maybe really either of them. There you go, know, you broke his stance. That corrosion would break his armor. And, would and now he's gone. So I do six, I mean, it'll take away one. Perfect. It will, yeah, it'll take away just that one, because it only... So you also mentioned, like, the support so character, for example. Yeah. You yeah. Can, you could build a deck around, not build a deck, but you could give her yeah. cards that would like have her basically do as much damage as the guitar is. Yeah, well. definitely. You can have her doing damage, you can have her healing, you can have her buffing and debuffing. It's, it's really how you want to build around it. So You can have multiple of the same cards. Yeah. So you took one damage, you got one damage. Yeah, we'll see these next three nodes there, and then... Yeah. So this okay, is where so we get this. It's so a gain to one armor for energy remaining at the end of the round. So you... Oh, oh my God. Hit B, yeah. press A, okay. there you go. And <laughs> then right. you want to make sure you put it on two and don't override your other... Okay. Energy. So you basically would choose somebody, and you give them that. So now they're going to have that perk going the rest of the game. You can always choose to override it. on like telephone poles and, and that kind of like grungy, dirty uh, aesthetic. But then also, um, you know, the game itself is, is a game that uh, I believe uh, our designer, Miko, was a, it was an idea that she kind of had in her head for a long time and thinking about kind of, it started as uh, we made a pen and paper version basically to try it out and it was feeling great and we were really digging it. And uh, yeah, she took a bunch of inspiration from different places and then the art is definitely influenced by our lead artist. Uh, a bunch of different bands that, uh, that he, he loves. Basically, that's just So, um, they're not, well, in the video, there's not going to really show any music, obviously, yeah. but like, do you have like any. So, who are the bands that are actually like playing like the music or whatever? So, like, all, the music, music? all the music is done in house. Uh, so, it's our in house uh, sound team. Uh, there's definitely a lot of influences that we uh, that we base a lot of that stuff up. So the reason it's zero damage oh. is because you're weak. Oh, okay. Because the guy attacked. Yeah, he, he did it. He did a debuff, basically. Okay. So that's going to tick down. Yeah. So you'll be three weakness, then two weakness. And so, like, obviously, we don't have that now just because we have time. Like, so, do you have like any future plans for the game once it releases, like any like yep. content? Yeah, so it's going to launch with eight musicians, but we're planning to add four additional musicians to post launch support uh, once we release over the first few months there. That's all free DLC, nothing that will be uh, charging for. So, yeah. And if you beat him, then it just pulls up a splash screen and like, hey, join our game. Uh, okay, so, what's <laughs> up? 
exhaust was bad, but you can only use it for once per battle. I thought was going to attack them. Okay. Oh, there you go. Coup de Gras going to be great. Yeah. So you get a new hand every turn, basically, yep. because I know it's like there was some cards in my hand that I didn't use, so it automatically gets discarded. Yeah. Exactly, but you'll get them back, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's all good. That makes it fair, too, because like if you have a card in your hand, you want to hold it on, and yeah, you got to decide exactly, whether to use exactly. it some card now. But it also helps as well, because that way you don't feel like you have to like you have keep to. a card in your hand. You exactly, can just, yeah. exactly. So it's, it's actually like good that way. There we go, you're going to finish them off. Excellent finish. All right. Well, That's really thank cool. Thank you for checking it no out. No problem. That 